Hello, my name is Nicole, and thank you so much for taking the time out to listen. Today, I titled this message, Unchanged, No Healing from the Past. Unchanged, No Healing from the Past. Every now and again, we get someone from the network that really wants to change. They've heard the convicting messages, the ones that cater to a specific gender, men grappling with, for instance, lack of empathy, womanizing. They'll come through the network and they'll listen to a convicting message like women who are bossy in relationships, controlling and they say, that's me that she's talking about ever so humbly. And I want to change. And sometimes I get to communicate with them one on one via email, emails that you don't see that I don't get in front of a camera and talk about because they're just that personal. Sometimes they reach out via the comment section and they simply want prayer. Or they have that question that one question that God has not released me to answer because sometimes the answer is within you. The answer that God has already given you in this search to be a better person. But what about the one who is unchanged? The one who doesn't see his or herself at fault about too much of anything. The one who has yet to heal from the past. How do we even know these people exist around us? I'll tell you because sometimes childhood woes, teenage rebellion, and adult stubbornness shows up in the decisions that they make and don't make currently, right now. Take a look at the people around you. If you are that one who doesn't mind taking a look at yourself because part of recovering in any situation, getting over any type of addiction is you're going to spend a lot of time soul searching. Take a look, though, at the people around you and how they connect with you. The decisions that you made to keep them, let's say, at a workplace, for instance, this one gets chance after chance after chance because she exhibits addictions that the young fellow saw in his mother years and years ago. But this one doesn't get chance after chance because he exhibits signs that I hated about my father years and years ago. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Some folks, they hire and fire based on the types of things subconsciously that they've gone through. Some folks allow people into their circle based on familiarity, what makes me feel good, even though it's toxic and is no good in the hood. Uh-oh, much less anywhere else. I am unchanged. I'm not healing from my past because I keep bringing my past with me like the homeless person has all those bags in a cart. So worried about material, so worried about his or her belongings, but yet he smells, she smells dirty, don't have a place to stay. See, priorities in the wrong place. My dysfunction shows up in my communicating. I remember this type of argument, and so I'm going to attack it like I saw my mother attack situations years ago with her relatives. She got loud, she got bold, and she got in people's faces. And some folks will say, that's right, that's good. Other people who have some experience <laughs> in communicating Function, functional communicating, healthy communicating knows that's not how you do things. And we know this to be true because if you were to try that at the workplace, hmm, <laughs> right? Somebody is going to get written up. Eventually, they're going to lose their job. We take these things that we have yet to heal from 
And we'll either sugarcoat, hide them, lie about them, cover them up, whatever. But at the end of the day, when we get in the presence of the Lord and the people of God, they expose. Oh, yes. And some God will give them the command. It is time for deliverance. Let's cast out demons today because we're not just dealing with a personality in the moment for the time being. But we're dealing with a lifetime of issues in that one. Matter of fact, it's generational. So let's cast out demons today. Oh, somebody right now, you can take your hand, place it on your forehead, tap it a few times and just say, I've got to stop thinking like this, this negative stinking thinking. I've got to stop trying to make excuses for why I don't do what it is that God has called me to do. How many messages have I told people to go to the church? But I don't go to no church and I don't this, that and the other. They told me I said Go to the church in Jesus mighty name. It don't have to be that one that reminds you of what you went through way back in the day. This is something that God has assigned you. Some folks, they're looking for what they went through back in the day because it's familiar. It's comfortable. And those are the people that look like me. And that's who I like. Yeah, but that's not where your healing is coming from. Uh Oh, that's not where your deliverance is coming from. Because if it was so great and so wonderful and so nice, why are we still dealing with some of them demons? Woo, Jesus. Why are we still challenged over the same old things? Keep coming out our mouths. Why are we on that struggle bus? Why are we justifying dysfunctional behaviors of yesteryear? Just because that's mama, daddy, grandmama, cousin, auntie, and whoever else. Come on now. We got to stop with this foolishness. Some of us, we so bound by ethnicity related issues that we can't even move a little close to the right toward the one true God. We still got folks that's pulling us over there saying them people, those people or those devils or whatever else they want to call different people. Because they don't look like you, because they don't think like you, because they don't act like you, because they don't laugh loud at your silly, stupid jokes. Accusing people of things that they're not even. It's just that you got caught up in that programming and you believe, though, that because you praying, some folks, not all, but because you praying, oh, I'm good, I'm changed. Mm, I beg to differ. The Lord been showing me in the spirit that some folks, they're just hiding behind words of wisdom. They're just saying, God bless you and hallelujah and praise the Lord. Because, well, that sounds good, but they're not believing it. And they're definitely not walking with Jesus Christ. And they're being very disobedient when the Holy Spirit that Jesus left behind, mind you, according to the book of Acts, when the Holy Spirit speaks to them, they are ignoring. And uh, last I checked, when you ignore the Holy Spirit, when you decide to go your own way, when you put God on the back, Burner, and you know God, and you know that you were saved, sanctified, and Holy Ghost filled, and you on that backsliding trip. God got something for you, and it's no blessing. See, some people believe themselves to be blessed when the Lord told me in his spirit, they're cursed. They're cursed. If you've been following this channel for at least five years or more, because this channel's been around at the recording of this message for 10 years then you are already quite aware of the journey that I'm on. And that journey is very much like a 12 step program, even though I never say step one, step two and all that. But it is very much like a step, a 12 step program. And the funny thing about it is, is that I didn't get around a bunch of people in a support group and uh, belong to a 12 step program of any sort. God, he ordered my steps. (laughs) Come on. He ordered my steps into a program with him that works. And that program is one that you all do. Some of you all do have a name for a 12 step for overeating, a 12 step for drug addiction, a 12 step, you know, for alcohol or some other type of addiction. But it's a program that God puts us on spiritually. You cannot do a 12 step program of any sort without going through a healing process. But you know that you're not healed when you look around or even when you got other people around you that say, oh, you ain't changed. You still doing A, B and C. 
Number two, you know that you're not healed and you're not changed when you still are gravitating or making excuses for or protecting toxic folk, whether they're relatives or not. You know you should have written that person up at the workplace a long time ago, repeatedly, and then got her out. Oh, but then maybe you did, but threw away the paper. And it all tied back to way back when, with mama and them. Oh, some people don't connect the dots, but we do, because we on the outside looking in. And that's why some of you all feel so moved to listen to this message, because the Lord wants you to start connecting the dots. You're never too old. You're never too old to connect the dots as to why you make the decisions that you make. When I got married, not once but twice, I recognized that there were certain things within the individuals that reminded me of family. And hopefully, right, some folks will say, hopefully it was the good. Yeah, it was the good, but then, uh uh-oh, let's not just focus in on the good. But there was also some things that weren't so good, okay? And the Lord said, and that's another reason why you were drawn to this person. Because it was familiar, it was comfortable to you. But I am here to tell you, though, daughter, that that right there that you think is okay and all right is what you need to heal from because it's toxic. That particular thing that you're making excuses about concerning this person and that one, that is toxic. Case in point, one while there in a former uh, relationship, I thought that, well, if a man's going to cheat, he's going to cheat. You know, I mean, it is what it is. He could cheat with whoever. But if you love yourself enough, you're going to say, not with me. Come on. You're not going to make excuses. You're not going to say, well, mama went through that. Uh, cousin so-and-so went through that. Auntie or whoever that's in your family. You're going to say, uh-uh, the buck stops right here. You're not complicating my life with this cheating and creeping and lying. If that's what you want to do, you go. You get gone. And I dismissed. I dismissed that person first emotionally. And it took a while. It took some years. Yes, years. For some people, it takes years because it depends on how tied you are to them. That could be a soul tie that needs to be broken. And somebody needs to do some research on soul ties because I don't have time to get into it today. But as you are going through this healing process, whatever it might be, you recognize that, yes, it is healing that I'm after. I want to be so done with this thing. But the unchanged person, the one who has yet to heal, is still going after those things that keep the addiction going, that keep the struggle real, that keep the cheating and creeping right there in the back corner somewhere or under the bed or (laughs) down the street or in a car. You see what I mean? Because they don't want to heal. And this is what frustrates some of us because we see that that person is still holding on to the past by doing certain things that are doing nothing more than keeping him or her bound. I want to see you free, but when I speak to you, you don't want to hear me. And then when you don't want to hear me, you frustrate me. And when you frustrate me, you cause me to start thinking so much about you instead of the God that I'm supposed to be zeroing in on in order to get my healing or in order to keep me where I need to be. And that's free from whatever the addiction might be, you see. And this is why number one, step one is that you've got to detach yourself. And I want to refer to a particular book because somebody needs a resource right now. And there's not enough time to get into all of what I'm trying to uh, uh, preach and teach and lead you on. And that is to be healed and to get away from that past, right? Of foolishness that shows up in your current decision making. And to be that one that is changed so that people don't keep saying, girl, you ain't changed. Boy, please. Uh, uh, uh. Mama, daddy, cousin, brother, sister still doing the same old, same old. Because see, when I hear people tell me that, that just tells me, "Uh uh-huh, I can't be around that person. Because that person that I knew when is that person that's going to most likely try to recruit me back into that victim. Okay, back into that little girl who cries very easily, back into that one that takes everybody's burdens on her shoulders. Mm -mm, No, thank you. Tell me that so-and-so changed. Tell me that you got evidence and proof so-and-so changed. Tell me that there's some fruits of the spirit that's evident, that they are 
reading that Bible. They are attending church. Oh, because I know that was a big issue for them. And for them to be up in the church and they are actually exhibiting signs. And I know, all right, God is moving. You see, because some people are <laughs> a tough nut to crack. Literally. So we got some detachment that takes place first in this healing. That is why those earlier messages, as well as some of them that I bring you back to talk about distancing yourself, right? Removing yourself out of situations, establishing boundaries, that type of talk. That's all detachment talk. We got to detach in this book by Melody Beatty. It says, the title of it is Codependence Guide to the 12 Steps, How to Find the Right Program for You and Apply Each of the 12 Steps to Your Own Issues. Uh, in the book, it says the first step is the step that helps us begin detaching a recovery concept that means we release and detach from others lovingly whenever possible. OK, and I know sometimes lovingly doesn't show up in an argument, in a battle, when somebody's grabbing their stuff and leaving, when somebody is driving off in a hurry and never to return again. But detach is detach either way you look at it. And it's what's best when you're dealing with toxic, stubborn folks who ain't changed and I ain't going to change, said one relative. OK. This step helps us begin to identify the proper use and abuse of willpower. We begin feeling instead of running from our emotions. We identify how we have neglected ourselves so we may better love ourselves in any circumstance. It is the first step toward removing ourselves as victims of others, of ourselves, of life. This is the detachment step. And this step is about boundaries, okay? Once again, I want you all to get this book, Codependence Guide to the 12 Steps. It's powerful, I'm telling you. And why would I get a book like that? Because those of you all who uh, know something about me, you know that uh, there's been those times in my life where I did straight up codependency type of behavior. It's all about that one. It's all about how um, they want me to treat them. And then I'm thinking about what I said, what I did, how I can serve them and all that, even if that person is emotionally and or physically abusive. Step two, okay, is basically um, it put it, it. Step two is what puts you back on track. Okay. Once you've detached yourself from someone, okay, you have to realize what power you hold. Because see, that person, they was holding on to some of your power. That's why the healing didn't take place for some folks. That's why they're still unchanged. Because their power is going elsewhere. <laughs> Lord Jesus, parents are good for giving their power over to children. Not all, but many do. And don't realize it. Okay? I got to take my power back. We got husbands and wives giving power to each other. Okay? They are like gods to one another. Rather than serving the one true God. Oh, excuse me. Wait a minute. I can't take you. To heaven with me. Um, matter of fact, are you going to be next to me when God judges? Oh, that's right. Wait a minute. Hold up. I got my power in the wrong place. I got to put my power with the one true God, which we're going to get into the spiritual side of things, too. OK, so one thing you've got to understand is that. You're recognizing who you are, you recognize the power that is within you. OK, uh, there's a quote in here by uh, from a Jack W. She says or he says, I should say, step two is my favorite because of the sanity clause. When I question God's existence or involvement, this step assures me that grace happens. OK, sanity is going to slowly but surely manifest itself in your life where they called you crazy. And I had people say that where they called you insane. You don't know what you're talking about or whatever. As you are moving toward who you are and regaining your power, you also are moving towards sanity because I am no longer around those who are insane, those who are dark, those who are dysfunctional, those who are toxic. OK, it's going to take some time, though, to uh, disconnect, dis dis uh, detach and so forth. But the plan though is to get your power back, not to place your power in the teacher, not to place your power in some other replacement or some other thing, but your power has to be within you. 
And you, like I said, can't do it if you got a bunch of toxic folks that's around you. Okay. Another thing, and I, this is from personal experience. I'm not going to quote from the book on this one, but you come to a personal faith, a belief in a deity that is greater than yourself. And this tends to work even with somebody who doesn't serve the one true God as much as I would love for them to do that. But we will see evidence of healing even with people who serve other deities because they're placing their power in once again, something that's greater than themselves and that helps them restore their sanity. Now in time though, uh, when it is a false God or false gods, uh, you won't see, uh, that the person is uh, remaining in healing. It's just temporal healing. That's why they end up going right back to the same old, same old because they were following after false gods. Okay. You got to follow the one true God. And then some of them, they followed the one true God, but they backslid because their flesh overrided their spirit. Okay. But yes, it does help to have uh, a faith, a belief in the one true God. And if you're not sure of the one true God, I suggest that you pray like I did. Very ignorant at the time. Didn't read the word uh, for years, but I had enough sense to ask the one true God to come into my life. And he's been in it ever since. Okay. There, of course, is a hope, a hope that things are going to get better. You're not wallowing in grief for always after you dis disconnected from someone you are hoping you are believing that everything's going to be okay it's going to be all right you're staying positive that's why you see some individuals you say wow ever since she got away from that group ever since you know he stopped talking to her um you know he's just so much better and he's been attending church he's been reading his word you know he's got a faith um and then when I talk to him, it's like he gives me hope for living. There's just something that's bright about him. Yeah, <laughs> he's on that healing journey. Hello. She is on that positive thinking trip. And not only that, she's positive doing. <laughs> Come on now. So there are those activities that you will participate in over time um, that will get your mind off of those folks who you detach yourself from. You will start to get a new perspective on your life and what you hope to accomplish. There's hope again, right? You've got some ideas. You might even make a career change. Um, people are going to see some serious change. There, but one thing about it, when you are on a healing process, you don't stay the same. That's why I question whether or not some people are really healed from the past. Like I said, still making decisions based on what somebody programmed, put into from way back when. Well, I thought it worked. I thought it was right because mama and daddy and everybody else said it. Yeah. And how's that turning out these days? OK, Bible says we are to love, right to love. So I can love the toxic folks from a distance. But I can open my doors to those people who they told me wasn't good, wasn't right, just because of their skin tone or because of some past history or abuse that they encounter. Not everybody is that way. So when we're walking with the Lord, the Lord will open our heart, hearts up to love people in a functional, healthy, righteous way and not, oh, I got to have sex with this one and that one to show somebody that I love them or I got to go over there and touch this one and spend all my money and all that just to show love. Uh, -uh. He shows us functional ways to love. Hallelujah and praise the Lord. And speaking of God, this step three that Melody Beatty talks about in Codependence Guide to the 12 Steps. She says, some of us struggle with the concept of God as a result of what we have been through. Come on. That's why some people don't serve God because of what they've been through before finding our way to these steps. I was really confused about God and the God part of this program, said Mary. I kept wondering how a loving God could have allowed this to happen in my life. And some folks, that's all they do is, is see is hear something like that or see it in print and they stay right there. Wondering how come God let this happen? Let's, can we get beyond that? Reading on, it says most of us find that if we stay open, we find our own path to spirituality. And that is what happened to me. I could not be basing my issues or issues that other people put upon me on God's existence. <laughs> really? 
Really? Come on. Most of us find things work out if we begin with whatever amount of belief or disbelief we possess. That's a starting point. Then I'm going to uh, I'm going to read uh, out, um, one section uh, from up underneath the header of turning over our lives and wills on page 47 of step three in that book. Um Making a decision to turn our will and our lives over to the care of God as we understand God is making a decision to live our life with God's help. And we each have a life to live. OK, we each have a life to live. Somebody may have taken that from you, but I'm here to remind you that you have a life to live and you once again need to take back your power in Jesus mighty name. We've been looking within ourselves over the years that's why some of the messages are quite com uh, convicting. And it's interesting because even in the book, she talks about looking within yourself. Okay. She said, codependency hides under all my addictions, said Carol. I avoid pain with something, relationships, substances, or work. I hid in a relationship so I didn't have to deal with me. Ooh, isn't that deep? That's what some of you all did, but thank God you're out. Many of us hide from our pain. Many of us hide from ourselves. Perhaps the last safest and strongest hold out from looking at ourselves is blaming our circumstances and condition on others. Focusing on others will neither solve our problems nor bring relief from the pain. It will divert us, but it won't accomplish the work we are seeking. It won't bring healing. Focusing on others won't change our circumstances. Many of us make the mistake of stopping our recovery efforts. Listen to this. Before we work this step, we recover long enough to identify the other person's problem and realize it's not our fault. But what we discover is this. If we do not use our, check this out, our present circumstances as a challenge, a trigger, and an invitation to look within, we will find ourselves dancing through a repeat performance. And that's why somebody who got out of a relationship and now you in another one and the drama just keeps coming and it's showing up like compounded interest. It just keeps building and building. But except you're not building a bank account. Instead, you're being drained financially. Why? Because you never really took the time out to look within yourself as to why you keep attracting who you who you're attracting why you keep doing what you're doing so therefore you're never healed but i look good i feel good i lost all that weight from that last relationship and blah 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 yeah but do you feel good on the inside or is that voice still there you see lord jesus so you got to search within yourself and you've got to find out what is right as well as what's wrong What's right with your values? You got to check any behaviors that are self-defeating. You got to take a look at your morals. Some folks don't have any. So how did you expect to remain in some place of healing? You don't have any morals. You don't establish any boundaries. You say anything goes. It's cool. Everything's right with the world. And somebody comes along and hurts you. Whoop! That's right. Should have established boundaries. We got folks who... Or as this book uh, says, we look for anger, fear, pain, rage, and resentment, including anger at God. We look for victimization, ways others have victimized us, ways we have allowed ourselves to be victimized by others, and ways we have victimized ourselves. And we explored all of that, didn't we, over these past years? We look for painful repressed memories. We seek out our fears and our limiting beliefs, messages that aren't true and may be setting the stage for our life. We look for the blocks that may be interfering with our ability to live in love. We don't do this to criticize or further wound ourselves or blame others and others or blame ourselves and others. We do this to what? Why were we doing all of this exploring our relationships, our childhood, you know, the highs, the lows? Why were we doing this? We do this to heal from all that has taken place in our lives. Forget what the critics say. You got a lot of nerve talking about this issue and that one. Who are you? You're just a woman. Who are you? You're just an African-American woman. Who are you? You're just an African-American Christian woman with some kids and divorced and Come on now. We do this to heal from all that is taking place in our lives. We do this to set ourselves free from the past. Thank you, Jesus. And on this channel, we do this to expose the lies and look to the truths. We do this what? 
according to the book, to hold ourselves accountable for our own healing and to achieve the highest level of self-responsibility and self-accountability possible. That is plenty said. And I agree and stand by it. And that's what this channel has been exemplifying. Healing, real healing, change, not unchanged. Recognizing where the past is still showing up in the present and might just show up in the future if we don't do something quick, fast and in a hurry concerning our situations. I talked about loving oneself and laboring to love myself. Some of you all, you keep going around the mulberry bush because you don't love yourself. And people hear that and they say, that's okay. She don't love herself. So let me see what I can come up with. Let me see what I can get from her. Oh, this weak woman, this pathetic woman. You see, they see those weaknesses and they play because that's what players do. They play. Some of you all, when it comes to relationships, men who keep making the same old mistake with women, it's time to get she's crazy. Quit avoiding a book. It's time to get she's crazy. And then women, socially sweet, privately cruel, abusive men. Don't you want out? Aren't you tired of covering up the fact that you messed up once again with another guy? Getting these toxic men and trying to make them into something that they're really not. Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. So. That is my recommendation for a resource on this whole business of recovery. Okay. There's going to be a lot of spirituality involved. So if that's not your cup of tea, then you can remain right where you are trying to do things in your own strength. But for those individuals who want to bring God into it, that is my recommendation. Codependence guide to the 12 steps. Those who want to take a look at these relationship mishaps and mess ups and what have you. Females, take a look at socially sweet, privately cruel, abusive men. Males, take a look at She's Crazy. Those books are written by me. The Unsaved, at the end of the day, what does this boil down to? The reason why some folks unchanged, still dealing with issues from the past, bringing those issues into the forefront, whether subtly or boldly. There's some unsaved folk, whether they're unsaved or there's people around them unsaved. Listening to their music, talking to them on the phone, being in so certain social circles. Luke five thirty two says, I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Sinners, backsliders. I want some folks saved, sanctified and Holy Ghost filled because I know what it's like to feel free in your spirit. Sure, you might be looking at times like you're falling apart on the outside, but inside you got God. Every situation, you rise above it because you are taking God seriously. You're not trying to run from the truth. You're not trying to fight everybody around you about the truth. You know the truth is what's going to set you free. And the truth about mommies and daddies and cousins and uncles and the truth about yourself. All of this combined is what helps people get to a place where they say, now I can finally finally walk in my calling now I can finally smile there's some folks they haven't smiled in a long time and you know why because they've been doing things in their own strength simply put I got this God I already know this God I don't need to go to your church God ah, ah, right okay and when you get tired of being tired when you get tired of running when you get tired of fighting you going to do something when you get tired of being that one that's on rock bottom all the time. You are going to do something when you get tired of people coming and nagging you. Why are you doing this? Why don't you stop this? You will pick yourself up by the bootstraps like a soldier and march where you need to march and do what you need to do. That's what soldiers do. And some of you all, you got that background where we don't working with the military, taking the commands. And what have you become now? My God, where is the discipline to eat healthy? Where is the discipline to walk the righteous path? Those of you all who are soldiers for Christ, you know better. But yet you are focused on everybody else while you hiding behind your sin. Preacher, minister, evangelist. 
thinking that people don't know. The discerning ones know. I can't tell you how many ministers they walk right past me as quick as they could. Uh-oh, they saw something that nobody else seen. Made sure that they was over there shaking hands and I got a little too close and woo, they disappear quick. Mm hmm? Because they lost their fire a long time ago. They haven't changed. Why would a minister do that to them little boys? Or why would a priest, you know, ugh, that's just disgusting. They had never changed. They told some lies about they had changed. No. They was grappling with their human selves, their flesh. They had no business taking on them type of leadership roles. Even God himself said, you can step down. They said, oh, I can't. I can't disappoint. I can't disappoint the uh, the brothers. I can't. Okay. So you rather go ahead on and keep sinning. Or, oh, everybody knows me to be this and to be that and I like the power. Yeah, but you are weak. You're not strong. Get out while you still can. Some folks, you ain't been found out on your dirty dirt. Get out while you still can, while you talking about the priests and the ministers and how you don't want to do this, that, and the other, and pay this money. And But look at you. Look at what you're hiding. Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And I have to remind some folks, Romans 1, 18, 20, and I'm going to close out with this. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness because that which may be known of God is manifest in them for God hath showed it unto them for the inevitable things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen being understood by the things that are made even his eternal power and Godhead so that they are without excuse. You have no excuse. The people around you have no excuse. Not to serve the one true God. Not to live that holy and righteous life. God reveals the ungodliness. God reveals the unchanged man or woman. That ex that wants to get back. God reveals. He reveals the secrets. If we sit down long enough with him. Why is it that suddenly... This one who hasn't changed, who's still holding on to all sorts of toxic things and people and places from the past. Why is it that he or she wants to be in my life? And the Lord starts revealing some things. It says that you got some money recently. Oh, Jesus, I'm talking to somebody. He says that some folks heard through the grapevine that. You're going to be getting some property. Uh-oh. Somebody else. That unchanged, ungodly, unrighteous, still holding on to the past. He's your boss. He's your boss and he makes unwise decisions because he's filled with his shared demons. And if you want to keep serving that person, you can go right ahead. But sooner or later... He going to show up and show out. But I need the money. The Lord says I can provide. But you don't know what I've gone through. The Lord says I know what you've gone through. Because I'm the one who got you through the last time. But, 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 but. There are people. That are going to leave this world. There are people that we know. As well as people that we don't know. And they're going to leave this world sooner. Rather than later. Because of their rebellion. Because they refuse to change. Bow your head in a moment of silence for all of those individuals that come to mind. As well as yourself. And that silence is to wake you up. It's time. It's time for somebody to make a change. Write down what it is that you're going to do to make life different for yourself, for your children, for your grandchildren. There is a future that's going to look back on the past. And you want to be the one that provided healthy, functional, life-changing experiences. You don't want to be remembered as a dysfunctional, disloyal, unfaithful, rebellious, mean-spirited person. 
Blessings to you.